So thanks for welcoming uh, me here uh, in India. It's a pleasure to be here and to uh, uh, present you uh, uh, this library. So we'll talk about the, the machines library, which is a, a Haskell libraries to do uh, data streaming. Just a few words about, uh, about myself. Um, so I'm contributing to open, some open source projects. You might have seen my name in, uh, in some Scala stuff like Scala Z or in Haskell where I wrote a, a few tools. Uh, I'm working in Switzerland for a company called Best Mile and we are building a, an operating platform for autonomous vehicles. So it's basically um, a way to take these autonomous vehicles and make a, a, a transport service out of it. So um, if working in Switzerland sounds interesting to you, just get in touch with me. We are actively hiring, um, so yeah. So what we will do today, um, we will explore that fascinating design space uh, for data streaming um, in the context of purely functional programming language, which uh, give in interesting uh, challenges. Uh, first, we'll see a little history of uh, what, were the, what were the different solutions developed uh, over the years. Uh, what are the, the trade-offs between these solutions? Um, and then we'll see uh, uh, how to use a machine in, a, in practice. Um, so the history is to motivate why I did choose to use machines because there was a lot of different uh, alternatives in the, the design space. So the fundamental problem that we have is that we want to express a program that processes a stream of data while interleaving effects, being constant in space and time, and achieve strong compositivity, reusability. Um, let's, so it's actually quite hard to keep these three things together. Um, so maybe to understand more what, what they mean, we will see a few examples where we just remove one of them and we see what we can do uh, with just two, and in Haskell, obviously. So if we remove the interleaving of effects, um, we can use Haskell lists, which provide both a constant space, space time and strong composability. So here there is an example. Um, we create an infinite list of integer. Um, we have to function one ink with, which simply uh, increment the inte integer by one, another one deck which just decrement the integer by 10. And what we want to do is basically, so th th then we compute the result of our operation, right? Um, we take that list of integer, we F map on it with deck, then we ink, and then we just take the, the, the 10 first element. So it works pretty well, even if the, if the uh, excess list is infinite, the program actually terminates, thanks to, to lazy evaluation, right? And uh, it actually fuses the different uh, uh, phases together. Um, so, and we have nice composability, right? We see that we can just chain this different fmap together and, and we compose our, our operation. Um, that's great, but we cannot mix effect into this, right? All these functions are pure. There's no IO there. So, okay, we, we, we have these two, but we don't have interleaving of effects. So, what if we put interleaving of effects, but we lose a, a, a constant space and time? So, we, we can use, uh, uh, there is in, a, in the Haskell core library some, some function uh, uh, to work with IO that help you interleave effects into it. One is map, map M, another one is, is fold M. So we take back the same example, but this time our uh, increment and decrement function work in the IO monad because they are uh, doing a side effect. Here I actually don't do any side effect. I just lift it in the IO monad using return, but I could, for example, print a line uh, on the console or do any other uh, IO operation, right? Um, so in order to do that, I basically have to use a map M, as we see in the, in, in the result uh, definition. And I can simply, uh, uh, you know, call map M to time, then I call take 10, and I get the result. I keep have a nice composability, right? I can chain my two, two steps together. Um, well, that's nice, but sadly, the program won't terminate. If you run that, it will get stuck at uh, map M ink access, because it will try to, to, it will basically force access which is an infinite list, and it will never terminate. Uh, so that's not good, right? So now let's see um, what if we drop the composability uh, aspect. Um, so we can do that by writing a, a, a highly specialized uh, a loop. So I, I just keep the definition of uh, ink deck and access. It's the same as the, as the previous slide. And now we have to write 
uh, the loop by hand. Um, so basically here we, we, we do a recursion, right? And we actually encode the logic that we, we, we had uh, previously. Um, here we see that we can compose our two functions together, but here we have to, to call it in the loop and then do the recursion here. So we really, we really lose composability. We're still able to compose these two functions here, but this is how we have to do the take, right? It's, it's really highly specialized. But at least it terminates and it works. But it's not ideal. We, we would like to, 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 to keep composability as well. So <clears throat> what are the solutions then, you know, to solve the, this problem? And there is a lot of them. So um, the, the first one which was proposed is the, is the um, well, actually, at first there was lazy IO. Uh, you might be heard of that. It's a way to, to process big files in Haskell without having to, uh, you know, while still being a constant in space and time. But there is a lot of uh, uh, issue with this approach. Um, first, you have unpredictable resource handling. If you ever use lazy IO, you probably had this issue where um, you read the uh, content of a file in a lazy data structure, and then the next operation just close the file, but you haven't yet uh, uh, get all the data from, from, from that resource. And when you actually try to use it, it breaks. You get an exception. Um, because basically it breaks, it breaks equational reasoning. Um, it, it makes us feel that we are using a, a, a pure data structure, but in fact it is not, because that lazy byte string, for example, will actually trigger a read on, a, on the file system. And that's a side effect. And as uh, uh, Brian was uh, uh, showing uh, earlier, that, that you know, breaks the, the equational reasoning. So the first solution that appeared was in uh, 2008, uh, called Iterative, and their dual uh, uh, generators. Uh, then we've seen a Conduit library, which, is, uh, which have a lot of combinators and is uh, uh, quite used. Um, then there was pipes, and then machines. Um, since I only started uh, coding in Haskell in 2014, I had to make a choice between uh, all these different uh, possibilities. And I will try to explain you uh, why I did choose uh, machines. So first, let's talk about uh, uh, iterative. Um, so it was the first uh, a practical solution to this problem uh, um, developed by Oleg Kislev. Um, the, the thing I don't really like about it is that it contains specialized abstraction for uh, the different stages, and that make it harder to compose. For example, you have uh, iterative to consume data, which is equivalent to a sync in, a, in the other libraries, uh, generators to produce data, and iterative to transform the data. But there is no common types uh, uh, between the, the, these specific uh, things. So it, it makes it harder to, to compose the, uh, them together. Also, another aspect is the, the resource handling is, is arguably not optimal in, in the implementation. So there was a few alternative developed, enumerator, iterate, IO, and others. Um, but they solve some of the problem, but they're not really uh, convincing. So then uh, a conduit appeared. Um, it's designed by uh, uh, Michael Snowman for the YESA framework. So it has really a strong emphasis on, on bringing practical for that web framework by having, for example, uh, uh, exception handling, resource handling. And um, so the, the library evolved quite a bit d d during all the years. And I will say it, it took some of the stuff from pipes and machines to put, it, to put them back into it. Uh, like initially there was a mutable state to make it performant, but then they were able to you know, rewrite it to use CPS. Um, my concern with it is that the, the, the core abstraction mi makes really a lot of different concerns. Some of them that I think should not be dealt uh, here. And we'll see later how this can be done. So then there was another take on it from uh, uh, Gabriel Gonzalez, which is called Pipes, um, which is really elegant because this time he, he really unified all the different types under a single one, making a uh, uh, composition really nice because actually all these abstraction form a category. So you can compose them like you compose your function or like you compose anything. Um, but unlike Conduit, it does not handle termination. And sadly, due the way the core is built, it's not something you could add later. It's, you, you, you simply cannot do it. Um, and then come, come machine. So machine was designed by uh, uh, Edward Metz, Werner, and, and Dan Doyle. Um, the thing with machine is that it, it does not try to handle resource management. It leaves that to the user, and I, I think that's a good idea. It 
give you a bit more work, but I think that today we don't have a good, you know, a good answer for that, for that problem. Um, so unlike any of the other, other solution I, I, I've seen, we've seen before, um, this one allows you to actually deal with complex topology. Um, for example, having multiple inputs in your stream, multiple outputs and stuff like that. Um, it does that by nicely parameterizing the, the input language. We'll, we'll see a bit later what, what it means. Um, conceptually, it's also a different metaphor. Um, Edward Met was saying that a pipe, the me pipe metaphor does not mean that it processes the data, so it, it prefers to use machine. And, and actually, a machine metaphor conveys the, the thinking that you can deal with multiple inputs. Um, something to know about machines, though, is that the design is not really complete, in a way. Uh, there is some abstraction which are currently not unified, and we know it's entirely possible to do it. We tried, but we still don't have a good solution for that. Um, still, I think that compared to what other libraries give you, it's, it's a really neat and simple design for such a, such a really complex problem. So in summary, if we, if we take out uh, Russell's handling, and I think we should because it makes things uh, nicer, um, there is nothing you can't do with machines that you could do with any other libraries. Um, then, as I said before, the conduit library makes you know, too many things together. And so the main advantage of, of, of using conduit, conduit today is that you have a, a, a massive ecosystem around it. So we'll find a lot of uh, uh, combinators to use, uh, integration with different libraries. But you know, it's most likely temporary. It just means that if people start contributing, it will get better with machines, and hopefully you will you might contribute uh, after after this talk. So let's so let's get in the in, in the library, and uh, yeah, here comes the, the types. So let, let's see what are the the, the core abstractions uh, defined into machines, and then later we'll see how we can we can use them. So the the um, machine is really sp split in two steps: machine and plan. For, first, we'll see the the definition of what a machine is, and then we'll, we'll see the other one. So the core algebra, which is actually what you use to run the thing, right? Uh, it's simply a step uh, where you have three type constructor, stop, uh, which means the machine has finished its job, yield, which means that you produce uh, a, a, an output value, the O, and await, which means that you await for uh, 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 an, an input value, which is a K in this case. So I won't explain all the type parameter for now, you can, you know, you don't have to understand all of them. We will see maybe later what, what they mean. Um, so then this algebra is used by the, the root of all other types in, in, in machine, which is machine T, which is a, a, a monad transformer. So you actually have M, which is the monadic context on what you want to work in. K is the input language. So unlike other libraries, K is actually a higher candidate type. Uh, but we can hear that for now. And O is the, the output type of what the, the machine should produce. Um, and then we see that basically running the machine is uh, getting a step in that monadic context. So we'll have to run that monadic context to get the step out of it to know what will be the next things to do. Um, there's a lot of aliases in machines, which is pretty nice, but uh, sadly GHC does not do a good job at using them to show you error messages. But um, one of them is machine without the T, which allow you to you know, uh, work on any monad, and it uses a universal quantification just to do that, to hide you know, that, that, that specific. Um, so now let, let's see what are the, the other uh, type available to you. So here we see they're all defined with type alias, which I think is, is, is quite neat. So we have a, a source which discards the input language uh, uh, K, and just output value of type B, right? So it's something that you get data from. Uh, then you have another type, which is um, a process. It, it, it restricts the input language to a single value. So it actually, you know, um, it, it uses this uh, is a uh, type equality to, to make you encode just a single type instead of having a higher kind of type, and you, and you restrict your input to just that single type. So basically, a process takes values of type A as input and will produce values of type B as output. And you have also a monad transformer to work with. So where is the sync? Actually, there's no sync uh, defined. Uh, you could uh, define it like this, but in practice, it's not so useful. 
um, because it makes it harder to pass it around and, and if later you want to transform it to something else, it, it, it might be a bit harder. Um, still, there is a, a, a sync type defined in one of the uh, combinator library, which is called uh, machines IO, which help you to deal with uh, everything related to IO. And there is a, a, a sync IO, which you know, specializes on, on, on monad IO, which is typically used if you want you know, to, to send data to a, a file or, or stuff like that. So now here comes the, the plan, which is a, this dichotomy between plan and machine is what I was mentioning before about the library uh, that is not completely finished, because in theory you could unify these two things. But here, well, we, we have to do it. So a machine is usually constructed from a plan, which ideally you would like to think about a plan like this. So it looks a bit like the, the, the step algebra, right? You have a, a down, which gives you a final result. It's the, the results of the whole process, you know, what, what you get at the end, um, yield which produce a value, and give you what you will have to do next. So the plan to, to, to continue your work. Await, as before, it gives you a value, and, uh, and also the, the, the plan to continue working, and otherwise it can actually fail. Um, but it is not written like this in the, in the source code, uh, so don't be scared, we'll just see how it is really written, but because it, it, it is written using a, a continuous passing style. So it is actually written like that. It can be a bit uh, uh, scary to, to understand, but when you use your, the library, really, you, you, you don't see all this stuff. This is just to explain a bit uh, uh, the design behind it. Um, so without you know, understanding all these implementation details, uh, what is it important is, is that you can simply use this, this function to, to create your plant, uh, your plan if you want to yield a value or, or a weight. So why there is this, uh, this separation? It's actually quite critical to achieve uh, uh, the best performance possible. Something I did not mention yet is that in terms of benchmarking, machine is the, is the fastest uh, kid in town. And this is due to this, to this split. Um, trying to avoid it is, is really an interesting subject of research. There was a, a paper lately called uh, um, Re Reflection Without Remorse from a Leg which show an, a, a nice technique, which we thought would be useful here, but actually it doesn't work. So, but we still have hope to, to do that. Um, what it means in practice to you, this dichotomy? It means that um, a plan cannot change its programming logic during its execution. Uh, you can think, for example, about a non-context-free parser, right, where you have to understand the context to know what you have to do next. So you, you have a state that you have to keep in, in your process and, and, and that make your logic change along the way. Um, if that's a bit hard to understand, you can simply follow this simple advice. Always start by building a plan. Uh, you have a, a much friendlier API. It's much nicer to use. And if you, you run into one of these limitations, you will realize it uh, uh, quickly and you can then switch to, to writing uh, directly a machine. So now let's see how we can uh, use all of these types to do actually uh, useful stuff. So there is uh, all the code for the, that I will show uh, here, available in a Git repo, and you can uh, simply clone it if you want to, uh, to, follow, um, to follow it. So let's start by rewriting our initial example that I, I shown uh, at first. Um, in order to do so, we'll need a few combinators. So le let's see what they are. Uh, we have taking, which is basically like take for list, but it is for a machine. Uh, so what it does is that it, it will simply, um, so you give a, a number of elements you want to take, right? So we'll simply await and yield for that number of times, and then it stops. Okay. Uh, then we have a, a, a nice and useful function, which is called autoM. It applies a monadic function to each element of a process. So basically, it takes a function from A to MB and lifts it in a process T M A B. Um, so yeah, it's a nice way to take any function and just make a machine out of it. Um, then an, another combinator which is very useful is a, is a source one. So all of these combinators are in the, in the core library. Uh, source just simply take a full label and construct a source out of it. So it will yield each element of that uh, uh, full label along the way. So those machines are constructed using a, a plan, actually. You know, you know, they use a weight and yield, which produce a plan. 
but then we have to transform it to a machine, process is a machine, right? Um, so we have to construct. Construct basically uh, uh, take a plan and build it, or we have repeatedly, which do the same, but we'll continue uh, repeating the, the same plan over and over. I'll, I'll show the definition later. So let's see how we can uh, rewrite that, uh, that sample program, right? So we have our ink deck access uh, uh, function, and now we're creating our, our pipeline, our pipeline of operation. So here we use uh, uh, this operator. This is the, the operator to compose machine together. Um, you can have it in one direction or the other, it's up to you. I'm not sure why I, I like to write it like this, because I like to see the data flowing this way until it gets there, ultimately. Um, so here we source, first we source our access list, right? So we transform that foldable of infinite integer into a source. Um, then we, we add our uh, incremental function. Here we use auto m, right? So auto, auto m will transform that into IO in function into a process t uh, working in the, in the IO monad. We do the same for, for decrement, and then we call that taking function I, I, I shown before, and yeah, it works. We get the, the, the free thing we wanted, right? Uh, we have composability, it's constant in, in, in space and time. Yeah, we, we, have, we have everything we want. So now let's see a, a, a slightly more a sophisticated uh, uh, example. Um, in, in order to do that, uh, sorry. Oh yes, Let, let's see actually how we are uh, transforming a, a, a plan to a machine. So this is the, the two combinator we seen earlier used in the in the in the await and the, and the, uh, sorry in the in the other de definition before maybe I can just show them again. So here construct and repeatedly right they were used to construct the, this machine out of plan. So what are they doing? So construct basically we call that run plan t function. But if we get back to it. Basically, when you want to run plenty, you have to provide how to deal with each of the case, right? If I have to wait, if I have to yield something, you have to provide all the function to deal with that. It's basically like if you give your interpreter for it. So here, here it is. Basically, we, cons we, we convert the, the plan algebra to the, ma to the machine algebra for each uh, of the constructor. Um, and then repeatedly is basically simply construction, constructing a plan forever. So it will do it, and once it stops, it will redo it again, infinitely. So now let's see uh, how we can answer a, a boring interview question uh, using machine, the typical uh, uh, fizz buzz. Um, so here we create a, a process from int to string, right? It will uh, uh, get an int as input, and produce actually one or multiple string, right? Because, uh, so if you're not familiar with fizz buzz, the idea that uh, if, a, if a number is uh, div divisible by three, you have to print fizz. If it's by five, you have to print buzz. But if it's buff, you have to print fizz and buzz, right? So you could say, oh, I could uh, just put a, a string with fizz buzz in it. But here it's, it's neater, right? Because it means that for one integer, we might produce more than one string, right? And that's where the DSL actually comes handy to express this. Um, so let's see how we do it, right? So first we call repeatedly because this is a process that is infinite, right? We, there's no reason we want to stop our, our machine. So what do we do? First, we await for a value, which will be an int. So we get it. Then we check if it's uh, uh, divisible by three or five. And then we use uh, simply the, the, the one function from, uh, from monad, which allow you to uh, run a monadic action only if a specific predicate holds. So here we said, okay, if mod three, I yield fizz. If mod five, I yield buzz. And um, if uh, uh, not any of the other, I just show the, the number. Um, and I think it's a pretty you know, nice way to express this, uh, this problem. Um, so then uh, again, we have the, an infinite list of, of integer. Um, we simply source our access like before. We put FizzBuzz in the pipeline, and then we can just simply put a, a print to, to see what happened. Um, if you run this, it will never terminate, but it works because it will fizz buzz until the infinite, right? But uh, it's pretty neat, constant time memory, and it, it, it nicely composed. You have a good DSL to express what you want. Yeah, I think it's, it's pretty neat. So let's see a few more uh, uh, 
uh, quite useful uh, combinators. There's a, there's a bunch of them you can, so the documentation is not uh, really advanced, but still, by looking at Hackage, you can, you can get uh, some of the stuff. Um, one which is uh, particularly useful is uh, at part. Uh, for example, if you have a process which produces a list of something, it will flatten it. It means that then if you have a process that just take one element of it, 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 it will take it. So basically, you, you could replace this by a, a list of A and A, right? So you take a list of A and just produce one element after, after each other. Uh, then there's another combinator, which is a largest. You can think of it, uh, it's the max equivalent, but for, for streaming, right? Um, and in case you want to work with, uh, with file contents, there is a, 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 another library called Machine.io that I mentioned before that provides you a few more combinators to work with that. Uh, one is uh, source handle, which was actually, um, take the handle of a, of a IO resource <coughs> and, and feed the data in a source. <coughs> so something to, just to note here is that it takes a handle directly, right? So you, you have to take care of closing the handle later or stuff like that. That's where, you know, machine is not mixing resource handling with other stuff. But that's actually fine because as we s we'll see later, we, we have other ways of, of dealing with resources. <coughs> and um, actually you have to say how you want to, to get your data. It can be by chunk or by line. And there's even other combinators uh, for you. So now let's see how we can uh, use this, uh, this new combinator we, we just seen to, uh, to, well, let's say find the lar largest world in a, in a given file. So here comes the, the, the resource handling. To do the resource handling, we'll use with file, which is provided directly by the, by the core library, and that will ensure that the handle is closed once we finish. It will open the handle for us, and it will close it for us. So we said, okay, I want to work with this file. I just want to read it. And then what we provide is a function that receives the handle and then returns something. And that something will be given to us at the end, right? Um, so then, uh, what we say that, so then we prepare our, our pipeline, right? So here we see the, the, the combinators I, I mentioned before. We say, okay, I want to source that handle by line. I give the handle. It will give me a, a source of, uh, of uh, strings. Uh, then I can directly use the, the, the function uh, words from a data text that will break the line into, into words. Um, but that function take one string as input, but return a list of string. Uh, so we have to use as parts here to, to flatten that list into just single elements. Then we can use a, a length to count the number of elements. And finally, we use largest to just keep the biggest one. And uh, yeah, and it works. So it, it's quite nice. I, I think it's, it's not bad to, you know, keep the resource handling out, out of, the, of the streaming library. So now we'll, we'll just see another uh, uh, library that gives you a bunch of combinators still to work you know, with, with file called machine directory. So I won't show the implementation here. I will show the implementation of one of them later. It, it might be a bit more tricky. Um, so basically you have, the, um, for example, uh, files. So it's a process that works in I.O. that take file path and produce file path. Um, it means it, it will enumerate all the files in a given directory. Well, in a list of directory. Every directory will give an input. It will produce as output the list of files in them. Then you have the same for directories, but instead it is directories. Directory content will list actually all the content that you find in a given path. And then you have dir directory walk. Directory walk allows you to, you know, you recursively go through a, a directory and enum enumerate all the things in it. Um, you know, it's a way to, for example, process all the files in a, in a given uh, uh, folder. So we'll get back to the implementation detail later. So let's see, now we can, uh, we can try to write a, a complete program uh, with all the, all the things we, we've seen before. So here what we'll try to do is, um, is to write a program that will take a, a list of folders, enumerate all the files in that folders, and find the, one, uh, and find the largest word, a word into it. Um, so here, first we can see that this is exactly the same code as before at the bottom, right? So this is the, um, the pipeline to find the largest world in a given file. So it's here. And here we'll use, so let, let's start at the beginning. 
First, we get uh, the arguments from the command line, so we expect them to be a list of, uh, of file paths. Um, we source them, and then we use that directory uh, walk uh, combinator that will go through all these directories and list all the files in it. Uh, then, directory walk, it returns you uh, uh, everything, right? Directory and files, but you just want the files. So we use files that will just filter uh, this type of content. Uh, and then we can simply uh, uh, lift our, our function, which is built again with a, with a machine, and again use largest to compose, uh, to, to compose it and get, and get the result at the end. So, so yeah, here we, we see that we can you know, quite nicely compose these things together. You can, you know, he, here we see that we, we even run a machine inside and then get the result back and, 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 and everything uh, fit together. So, yeah, so everything we, we've, done, we've done so far was by uh, 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 using, uh, using combinators, you know, and, and, and putting them together. We did implement a, a something a bit more sophisticated here where we actually build a plan, right? But we were always, always working with, with, with that plan. Um, so as I was saying, once you need to, to, to adapt your logic based on your, on, your, on your input, you cannot use plan anymore. So here I just want to show you, to show you a quick example, um, maybe without explaining all the details, but just you know, to see where, when it can be useful to directly use a machine. Um, so when we walk a, a directory, what we need to do, if we want to do it in constant time and memory, because obviously you could, for example, list all the files, uh, all the directories, and then list all the files of, of all the directories, but you know, that, that wouldn't be uh, incremental. Um, so we have to switch between two modes of operation. One is actually listing the directories, and the other one is yielding the content. And we don't want to uh, uh, list all directories and then yield all the content. We want to do it step by step. So in order to do that, we have to write directly uh, a machine, or a raw one. So as you can see, it's not as nice as, <laughs> as writing uh, uh, using a plan. Um, the key here is that when using this syntax, we can actually give what we want to be <clears throat> the next step. Um, so, for example, yes. Yeah, so, for example, we can we can define that f function that keep uh, uh, two lists in its states. One is the list of um, of di directory we enumerated, and the other one is the list of file we found. So we say if both are, are empty, uh, well. We, we, we have to, to, to call uh, uh, S again because we want it to be recursive. Um, if, if we have some files, which is here, right? We have some files, we'll simply yield them. If we don't, but we have some, uh, some directories, we'll actually list the content of the directory and add them in, in that state so we can later uh, uh, enumerate them. So yeah, as, as you can see, it's a more, bit more complex, but hopefully you, you won't have to go that far uh, um, to do your logic. It's good to know that machines uh, contain also uh, a lot of facilities to write state machine, and it can be used uh, that way uh, as well. So that's it, you can find uh, all, all the code uh, uh, online, um, a, few, a few references from where uh, I, I got some good information. There's a, the pipe tutorial by Gabriel Gonzalez that really explain a lot of uh, yeah, he explained really nicely how he, he, he designed pipes and some of the reason about the, the, the design choice. Uh, there is a, a blog post from uh, Michael Snowman that really described the differences between pipe and, and conduit. He explained why he, he made some decision and really motivates you know, uh, uh, the Russell Sondling, which you know, can make sense in his context, but it, it, it's not, it's not uh, my taste. And then obviously uh, the, the source code of, of, of machine, uh, which yeah, shows some, some, some great stuff. So I hope that gives you an intuition about you know, what you can do with that, uh, with that library. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you have questions. Yes? Ha, huh, that's a very good question. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Uh, so, sorry, the question was, does it handle uh, uh, back pressure? So it does not uh, 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 by design. So something that machine doesn't do as well, it, it doesn't deal with concurrency, right? But um, it, it's, actually not a big deal to achieve it. Um, in a nutshell, what you can do is, basically there, there is in, in machines IO, 
a few combinators that allow you to easily um, um, build the sync out of a channel, for example, or out of a, a structure that you use uh, in the STM. And by using, for example, a, a, a queue in the STM, or um, it could even be a TVAR. Even a TVAR can, can give you a, a back pressure. Because then you, you, you bind your, your, your stream together, and one will wait that the TVAR is empty before going, going back. So there's no uh, direct way of doing it with machines, but you can achieve it by using uh, other libraries, especially the, the STM, Software Transaction Manager. You have a question? Yeah? Sorry? Social language? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, it's very similar. Um, so the question is, uh, uh, how does that compare to a, a closure uh, a transducer? Um, so I remember at the time transducer came out, there was a few discussion on, uh, on Twitter. And from what I got, uh, I think transducer are a slightly specialized version of machines. But it's, it's very close. It's a really similar, a similar concept. You have a question? Yes? Yes. Yeah, so, so the question is, uh, as we've seen before, <coughs> where was it? Here. Um, we have to create that combinatorial staking to work, uh, uh, to have the, the same functionality as stake on a list. So the question is, do we have to rewrite everything that we have for a list, but for, for streams, right? Um, it depends. It depends. For example, in, in a lot of cases, you could just use auto M, or there is also auto without the M. They just take a, a pure function and list it uh, uh, as a process. So, that, so that, that, there is stuff you can do like that. Um, but for everything that you will implement on the list itself, no, usually you, you, you need specific combinators. It's relatively easy to find them because usually it's a, you have take, taking, you know, it's like that. It's a pattern. So you can hopefully easily find them. And usually you, you have, for example, you have for filter, you have filtering and, and stuff like that. Any other question? So that's it. Thank you, guys.